Rupert. It's all right. I'm here. Rupert, there's nothing to be alarmed about. It's only a drill. him taking the watch to the king. Did he? Yes. He did. The king decided to do his own experiment. An experiment that lasted months. Did it work? No, not at the beginning. At the beginning, it was a disaster. It is a most perplexing matter. Dr. Domain Bray, my astronomer and dear friend, came to me this morning with the news. Well, I can tell you, sir, that I did not believe it. He came here at once to see for myself. And he was right. Absolutely and utterly correct. I don't know what to make of it. I don't understand what was wrong. Wrong? What? Was it slow? Did it stop? What that it had, sir? What? No, the problem is more serious than that. Your what, sir? Your what, sir, is going backwards. Okay. Yeah, the position, I believe, is correct. The position is fine. I have no explanation for this. Wait, what? The compass needles. What do you think? The needles? When we were magnetizing the needles, what do we do with the... whatever you call it, what? The lodestones. Where's the key? The key. Quick, man, quick, check your whiskey. Ah, lodestones. You think the magnets were affecting the clock? I am sure of it, sir. Take these out and throw them in the garden. Immediately. There. Now we must start all over again. Your Majesty is very kind. Piffle, sir. I'm a scientist. Five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, eleven o'clock. Well, let me see, Mr. Harrison. I think we are on target, gentlemen. Good. Getting the hang of it now. Sneaky. going to kick you out soon, you know. Well, they can't possibly. I'm feeling particularly mad at the moment. I don't think they cure that kind of madness here. What will you do? I don't know. Pitch a tent outside the gates, I suppose. Do you have any objections to life under canvas? Not more than a couple of thousand. Hmm. Seriously, though. Seriously, though. 
I've no idea. It's just... You could move in with me. What, in the nurse's quarters? Wouldn't sister object, or do you imagine I wear some sort of disguise? Don't be silly, it doesn't suit you. No, I'm thinking about going home. Before they throw me out, too. My mother needs some help, and I feel I ought to be with her. It's not ideal, I know, but you could come too, if you wanted. Sounds pretty ideal to me. They've had hundreds of proofs. What makes you think one more will change their mind? Well, they must listen to the king. And there is one thing in our favour. <laughs> Lord Morton is deceased. <laughs> <laughs> I move to enter the results of the recent trial at the King's Observatory in Richmond, which show that in a trial of 70 days, greater than the time of the West Indies voyage stipulated in the act of Queen Anne, the watch lost less than a tenth of a second a day, which would be consistent with finding a longitude in those West Indies to a distance of less than one mile and therefore wholly within the act. <laughs> Sir, this board, this board cannot accept an unsupervised trial, no matter how eminent the participants may have been. This board is charged by a most solemn act of parliament, as these members are here to witness, and must satisfy its observations by its own eyes and not those of any other party. The royal trial was carried out under the strictest conditions with three separate key holders, His Majesty graciously consenting to be one of them. The regulating clock was a subject of nine observations of the sun to keep a check on its accuracy. Something the Astronomer Royal never attempted once during his own trial. Sit down, Mr. Harrison. I would like to call upon Captain John Campbell who has a report recently arrived from Jamaica concerning the exploratory voyage of His Majesty's ship Resolution under the command of Captain James Cook. Captain. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. Captain Cook is carrying a copy of Mr. Harrison's timekeeper made by Mr. Kendall and the um, astronomical tables of the Reverend Maskelyne. His full report will not be available until his return, but I am able to read you this extract from his log. It would not be doing justice to Mr. Harrison and Mr. Kendall if I did not own that we have received very great assistance from this useful and valuable timepiece. The watch was used to predict the landfall of St. Helena within three miles. This is not evidence, but anecdote. This board, under the direction of the late Lord Morton, made its conditions perfectly clear. When Mr. Harrison has completed work on his second copy, both watches will be subjected to a trial of several months on land and at sea with the utmost rigour. No other test will suffice. If you will excuse me, I have an important matter I must attend to. Mr. Harrison, if your business is finished here, perhaps you would care to accompany me. With the board's permission. I want to thank the board for giving me the opportunity to make a second copy of my watch. It is not often that a father is permitted to revisit the childhood of a much-loved child, as I have been allowed to. And on that journey, find a new respect and love for that child. I, I do beg your indulgence, my lord 